I was making five million dollars a year playing professional football and what I thought was my dream and I was miserable. So I just kind of spiraled out of control. Quarterback Ryan Leaf was arrested again Charges today. Charges of felony burglary, criminal possession of dangerous drugs. And I spent the next 32 months in prison. I know what the depression and the hopelessness feels like. I know what that feels like because I was right in it. The prison, the negative press, it was just a piece of life I had to get through. I'm so glad I didn't kill myself. Ryan's NFL career crashed hard, and there was no leeway. Instead, just hate and resentment. So much so, he ran back home to Great Falls, Montana, to do what we all asked him to do. Quit, hide, just go away. I felt like my career was a failure. I mean, I went to my lake house in Montana. I would collect as many pills as I could, and I'd disappear for like three months. So I started looking up um, open houses on Sundays. You know, nine times out of 10, I'd find a medicine cabinet or a cabinet in the kitchen that had pain pills. Cops kind of found out about it and came over to his house and arrested him. I was there when that happened. That was probably the worst moment of my life when I did that. He hated the name Ryan Leaf as much as the rest of the world, so he tried to leave it by attempting suicide. That failed, so instead he was content spending his life alone in a cell. I remember sending him a letter. His letter back to me was, stop writing me, just leave me alone. I only went outside twice in 32 months while in prison, really? by choice. Why? I mean, I was as self-loathing as you could have gotten. I think it wasn't until like the 28th month of those 32 months that I finally flipped the switch. What happened? Why 28 months in? My roommate. One day he just tore into me about how I didn't understand the value I had and what I could do when I got out of here, because Brian, you are going to get out of here at some point. He suggested I start going down and helping prisoners who didn't know how to read learn how to read. And with that, Ryan had an awakening. There was no more hate. It was just time to help. He took a job as a driver for Transcend, a recovery community. Ryan literally was willing to do whatever it took. He was willing to start from the bottom. It's like a big brother thing. You're just trying to help somebody along who is going through a difficult time. How many eggs do you want? Like, like, like 17? And you understand that because you went through the same difficult time. I was making 15 bucks an hour driving you guys around. Yeah. He was a big brother. He was a crucial member of my early support group when I was in my most fragile time. You know you Far more important than touchdowns, Ryan's now leading people through a different tunnel committing his time to helping veterans and those struggling with mental health and addiction. It's harder to ask for help. It's harder to do the healthy thing. But when you do and you do the next right thing, good things happen for everybody. His goals aren't winning Super Bowls. It's making a huge difference in very troubled people's lives. To me, this is much harder than what he did as an athlete. This is way harder. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just proud of what he's doing right now. see another peer of mine not be around because they didn't feel like they were worth it. And there's a lot of people here because of you. Well, I'm here because of a lot of people. One of the greatest movies of all time, It's a Wonderful Life, about George Bailey. What would happen if he followed through and took his own life? Hold your wrist up for me. If you would hit that artery the right way, Where would everybody's life be different? It's unmeasurable. I don't have any idea what it would have done to my family. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. People tell me the impact I'm having, but... Let's put it this way. It wouldn't have been right. Ryan Leaf joining us here now in studio, seeing these people in your family who walk the walk with you. How does that make you feel? Um, it's, uh, it's pretty special. I think it's a great opportunity for us to show people that you, you just don't give up. You can, you can conquer anything if you just ask for help. Um, I don't do it perfectly, but I'm gonna do it again tomorrow and try to be there for somebody who's struggling. You know, I think people who have been around anyone with addiction know that this is a daily battle it's a lifelong battle. 
You've only been out of jail two years. We wish you luck, certainly as you continue down that road, but really impressive to see the impact that you're already having on other people. It's got to feel good for you from that standpoint and maybe something that kind of helps you get through the day. It does. I mean, I don't think I had ever been of service to anybody in my life, ever. And to be able to do that now is transformational, completely. All right, well, thank you for sharing your story with us. Thanks, bud. All right, good luck to you, Ryan Leaf, and everybody out there who's fighting the fight that he is fighting. <laughs>